And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to some more NECC action here at NECC Esports. We've got an exciting series coming up for you here between Bryant University at URG and some Emergence Division action. I am your color commentator. My name is Lars Newton. Joining me here in the casting booth is Hyferia for your play-by-play. Hyferia, how are you doing tonight? I'm doing absolutely lovely. Obviously, watched that last series as well. It was a 3 0 sweep, but it was a, a very interesting series, and I really hope to see more of that. Sometimes you see a sweep, and it's not necessarily a deserved one. So, we're going to have to see whether that turns out here today as well between Brian and URG. Well, we had some, I know just in week one last week, we had some absolutely incredible series, and I fully expect to see some more of that going forward here. Bryant University versus URG, both coming off of a loss in week number one. Bryant taking that one all the way to game five, but dropping that one two to three versus SUNY Oswego. URG getting swept, Randolph making college in week one. So they're definitely going to be looking to come out here and make a statement. I think for URG, they're going to want to take game number one and really show, hey, this is our first game of the season that we're going to pick up in a win and then carry that momentum through the series. On the other side, you have Bryant University, who's – they just got nudged out for that victory in week number one. So they're also looking to come out here and say, hey, we deserve to have some wins on the board, and it's going to be just so huge. I think the pace is going to have to be set early in this series. Yeah, and obviously there was a preseason as well, which Brian, they didn't really play that. URG did. 
and they lost every single series. They've only managed to get one game in, well, six games. And with the first week, seven games. Seven series. Do apologize. So it's, it's not really a good look for them off the get-go. We're going to have to see. Maybe maybe they were just incredibly tough opponents. We don't really know that. We're going to have to see how these teams stack up. But looking at previous results, I've obviously not seen either of these teams play. But Brian is, on paper, the favorite here, in my opinion. Yeah, you have to give the team that is coming in off of a bigger start to this season. You know, they've, they've picked up a couple of wins so far. Uh, the team is just looking at some of these. They're, it's actually just an older team, so maybe they bring a little bit more level-headedness to this matchup. But the only way to find out who is going to be out on top is to put the players on the field, put five minutes on the clock, and let them duke it out against each other and see who walks away the victor. And, and like I said, I think the the real pace setter, the real the real determinator here is going to be whoever sets the pace off the bat. I fear you. Any predictions as we get into game number one? Yeah, it is Division 3, it's anything can happen kind of scenario, but no, nobody going for kick if that's not a good look. And they're all sitting in the goal, I don't know whether this is just a strat that they're going for or what's going on here, whether they're just messing about, but it's not good because you're already inviting so much pressure. And, well, I didn't even make my prediction, but my prediction is going to be Fur and Bryant are just going to take this because this is, this is not really something you want to do. No, it's not a good start here. I think a little bit of confusion on the side of the field it was a, a a little bit of an early join it's got the players a little scrambled and now off to a one goal deficit in favor of bryant urg needs to make that back quickly before this gets away from them yeah it's always unfortunate that you concede a goal due to some things but not being clear oh my word liam almost going off the sidewall that will drop to mag clashing and he drops it into the back of the net and that's a more of a lead now for brian i really love the way this play developed it was a great start here getting that pass down you have the player lurking on the backfield ready to take away that backfield defense from the defenders get that one touched into the center and get all three players involved that's good awareness on the field that's a good job managing spacing and getting everybody up and not triple committing but getting it all settled in and now it looks like the players have come to an agreement on the field to let a goal back the other way the only thing about this is we saw the first goal on confusion and now the equalizer to kind of even it out but that second goal that wasn't off the back of confusion that's the actual play coming from bryant it was pretty commanding it happened pretty quickly that's dangerous for urg going forward and that could also still be in the scrambles of the game thinking oh we just got scammed out of a goal here they do get one back here it's still not, not really the most fortunate thing that you want to run into so we're gonna have to see whether they can regain themselves whether they are able to put that aside and just go at their full force I, I absolutely love already the gentleman's agreement between these two teams saying okay look we got one out of the scrambles we'll give you one back for free as well and Liam going down the field 14 boost left over in the tank picks up a 12 pad as Lawrence going to the backboard second touch as well drops it into the center and they are still incredibly commanding as our Mac 11 puts that one into the back of the net once again getting multiple players involved here the entire team on the side of bryant getting involved to get that goal home and that's something if you're a urg you can't allow them to do that attack from the corner typically not a very effective direction to attack straight along the wall like that because you don't have a lot of options and where you can put that ball to try to get that attack out in front of the net but unfortunately for urg they allow that one across the middle but here's a shooting opportunity down and across just wide they're finding good offensive pressure they just need to find the magic to finish it off yeah, they, they need to continue on that pressure a little bit more and Lawrence is going into the center that's a good 50 from Lil Pickle and then it drops right into Ormac 11 who pops it into the attack again they're not really managing to put anything threatening or anything consistently threatening on target as Lawrence is getting another opportunity pass it to Liam who tries to go for a shot Liam has not really been involved but do you really need to with the likes of Ormac 11 on the attack every single time an assist pop picks up for Liam this is something that Brian has done very well is that consistent attack, that very fast rotation through the offensive end, getting attack after attack after attack. And you don't necessarily have to hit the net on that first shot. It's something I talk about a lot when I cast. And it's one of my favorite ways to score goals is shooting wide of the net, forcing a response out of the defense, baiting them away, and then taking that rebound off that backboard to look for another one, little pickle, touching that one away and not allowing Brian to run away with this one just yet. 
And that's a very intricate way to play as well. If you miss on purpose, you have to get good perfection on that. Because otherwise, they are still going to either get a save or they're just going to recognize that it's off. Especially at a higher level, it really becomes pivotal that you shoot off target or at least force something out of the defense because an initial shot on target is always going to be saved. Now, Liam, what can you do? You can pass that back to Lawrence who pops it out to the side. A bit of a giveaway into Lil Pickle who pops that one up into the opposing corner. Liam is there to deal with that. And after that, it is our Mac 11. And our Mac 11, he's been a pretty pivotal part of Brian's game. Yeah, obviously leading the goal scoring here with four to themselves, only really threatened by a little pickle, and that's not much of a threat. But now back the other way, Liam looking to claim one of their own just off the post. Doesn't quite find it. Now Armac is up again with another shot on net, and this is that repeated <laughs> attack we see out of Bryant again and again and again. But now the crossbar standing tall on the side of URG. They finally start to get this one away, and it's right back <laughs> off the crossbar yet again. That is oh, four good. crossbars in a row. <laughs> Let's see whether Lawrence can make that five. He puts it up high. Liam actually drops that one down, but it's cleared out. Now Armac 11 needs to hurry back into the goal. Lawrence is there in time. This is still going to drop into center. Is there anybody going to be up for that? A little pickle even gets a demo, but there's nobody there in the offensive pressure. Just currently not good enough on the side of URG and they need to get something more. Lil Pickle might be able to create that something more right here. Can he get the double tap? He can get a second touch, but it's not quite the double tap. Ooh, and then they're just going out and down the other end is our Mac 11 once again. Being absolutely pivotal to his team. Liam was there, tries to go for the touch, tries to do a little bit of a steely and well, as you saw, it did not work out, but it's still a goal, so they don't really mind that much. And I'm afraid that, unfortunately, due to circumstances, Lars's internet has went down, so lucky ducky. Well, he's not really going to make use of that because Lars is obviously not playing. But hey, I guess you're going to have to do with me. I guess you're going to have to do with big old Hyferia, big old uncle sitting up here and entertaining everyone. It's five to two. This is going to be an incredibly hard comeback for URG and they need to get something going right away because they've only got a minute left and they need to do it now as Lauren Chan, he picks it up. He goes, tries to go to the backboard. No pickle is right there to get that one out. Or at least attempting to get that one out. Armac into the center. Liam, he's been going for those the entire evening. He doesn't get it, but it's another goal for Bryant University. Um, it's, I don't know. I almost want to call it already. It's it's not looking great for them at all. Because a four-goal lead in a game where they've not really managed to look like the superior team, where they've not really managed to get anything going. They might just have to start thinking about the next one already as another pass goes into our Mac 11. It just seems as if he's just their entire attack. Every single pass going towards him. He's also got six of the goals on their side, nearing a thousand points on the board. Absolutely pivotal player on the side of Brian. Now, our Mac is actually going to be a little bit non selfish and puts it wide to try and get that pass in but this one is all over and done with i'm pretty sure uh, 3v3 if there's a comeback of four goals that is going to be the most ridiculous thing to happen in 3v3 that i've personally ever seen even at the lower level that's not something that should happen and i'm saying lower level this is still at least top two percent but hey this is the, the, the lowest division and actually ooh, our Mac, he's not going to be too happy about that. He had a perfect streak of scoring all the goals. And then Lawrence put one into the back of the net as well. So not a perfect record for him. Not all the goals to himself. He's going to have to share a little bit. But that is still a 1-0 for Bryant University. Who looks pretty commanding and pretty dominant in this match currently they're managing to catch URG off guard. And that's not only because of that initial confusion where... So, yeah, it's, it was a pretty commanding win, and you, you, you kind of need to... You kind of need to take that into account. Obviously, there was a... There was a 
bit of a scrambled start where nobody really knew what was going on. They got a goal back off of that, and that is also one of the only goals that they got in the entire series. They very much struggled to get anything going. And oh, it's Brian, they are looking so good right now, whereas URG, they need to pick up the pace. They need to get a little bit more of that offensive pressure. They have four shots. They got two goals out of it. But Brian, they've got 15 shots, if my math serves me right, and I'm pretty sure it does. Does. So both put in about half of their shots, which is a very good percentage. But then if you're on the wrong side of having the most amount of shots, it's not going to be ending well for you. And that is exactly what we saw for URG here. So we're going to have to see whether they can regain, whether they can reset themselves mentally and go back in it and, and get back going. We really, really need to see this happening. I think right now, if it's a 1-0, or if, I think if it leads to a 2-0, this is a good start for Lil Pico. He doesn't even let me finish my sentence. A miss coming in from the, from the defensive side. But if it gets to 2-0, Rio or Rio are going to have a very hard time coming back. Well, we're going to... I have to see how the rest of this game goes. It's 4 minute 50. An early goal. That is the lovely thing about it. You've still got so much time going on in the rest of the matchups. They're definitely not out. It's Ar Armac puts it to the sideboard. Or backboard, rather. Now, I'm going to put, try and put that center as well. It's so... Oh, that's a miss coming in from the attacking side. But it's still Armac. Obviously, it's Armac on the attacking side. Puts it into his teammate, Lawrence. Puts it in the far post, and that is the equalizer already. Only 30 seconds in, two goals being scored on the field, one on either side. And this has proven to be a little bit more of a battle coming out from URG. They are proving themselves a little bit more, which is what we need to see. They got a goal early on, and not because it was given to them. We're going to have to see. Lil Pico, he gets a 50 on it. He gets put off to the side, and Lil Pico, he's kind of the... The Armac of URG, but then his teammates need to help him, need to back him up, and everything like that as well. As oh my word, Ramsey with a complete miss on the ball. Now Lawrence going, trying to go into the center. That's perfectly into center. Lee missed there to put that in. Uh, well, we were 30 seconds further, and that's his third goal falling. If this continues at this pace, have a pretty pretty quick game here and I, I might be getting some info that potentially my co-caster is back although i'm not a hundred percent sure on that co-caster co-caster i am in Lawrence. fact back i have we yes. have found a way to bring me back into this matchup and continuing back the other way urg finally finding some momentum here in game number two able to keep this one a little bit closer and there's a shooting opportunity but you're absolutely right. They need to find a way to strike back a little bit quicker, a little bit more effectively, because Bryant still maintains advantage, and there's the third to Bryant. And now just a minute and 20 seconds in. That is a dangerous lead for them threatening to run away with this one again. Yeah, and I already said at the start that if this leads to a 2-0 for Bryant, I see a very dire situation for URG. Really need to see him pick it up this game, get something going because the reverse sweep, we've seen it in their in their record. It's not something that they're too familiar with, considering they pretty much got swept every single time except for once. They might get swept again here if they lose this one. Because Brian obviously will be on match point, but there's still more than enough time to play for. Yeah, three minutes and 20 seconds is plenty of time to try to make a comeback here, but I think they need to get some of that momentum going early. And the biggest thing here is I think they're a little bit out mechanic, a little bit out skilled by Bryant. URG needs to find a way to overcome that. It's going to be speed, team play, and maybe some physicality to open up the net as Liam getting a little fancy. I think getting a lot of confidence out of Bryant right now. They're very comfortable. You need to upset that comfort to try to make a comeback here. And you need to put them off their game. Because currently, as you said, they are looking like the stronger mechanical team, which is great practice, but it's not really going to be good for your results as Lawrence puts that one up high. That's going to be dropping straight down. Pickle doesn't read it. No, he doesn't, but the attack inside also doesn't read it. Lawrence is a little bit stunned, doesn't know where to go. Decides to drive back at some point in Armag. That's also not the greatest clear. A few demos coming out, but they're both on the blue side, both on the side of Brian. So they were still going to have more than enough man 
back to defend that one out as Lawrence puts it into the corner or Mac. Who else? Who else would be right there to take the shot? And his attacking performance, even though he's only got one goal, it's phenomenal. Only one goal in this four to one matchup. And you know the reason yeah. that they're up by such a commanding lead is because maybe Armax only got one goal, but you know he's been involved in so many plays already. They do such a great job of getting everybody involved, of using the entire team to bring that attack down the field. And, and like I said, unless URG can find a way to disrupt that, and I think the answer is going to be some physicality here, then they're just going to continue to be to be run over by this Bryant team. And Brian, they're very much looking to to keep on running over. And Liam, he's actually going off the ceiling. Oh my word, Liam, what are you doing? This is not something that we're supposed to be seeing here. But he still shows it to us nonetheless. And in the end, it's Lawrence who puts that one into the back of the net. And Liam, he got so much time on that ceiling. And that's a 5-1. And we can't really call it. But at the same time, it's hard to say you or G are going to get the comeback. Yeah, four goals in a minute and 56 seconds is very doable. In threes, it's a little bit tougher when you, as you get more players on the field, the comeback margins become more and more difficult to overcome. You know, ones if you're down by four or two minutes, it's basically you got the whole game left to play. In threes, it's a little bit different, but it's still doable. The issue here is Bryant's not letting off the gas. They continue to score. Liam with a beautiful read off the ceiling and puts that one in. Now a five goal lead, 97 seconds remaining. Oh, hello, Liam actually with a little bit of a dish. I didn't even see that one. For me, he kind of came in soaring from the side and putting that one into the back of the net. And well, that he came off the side will makes that actually a relatively impressive goal. And there's Lucky Ducky trying to get something going as well, but it's, it's just not really good enough. Even though this 50 goes in, across the entire field, there's nobody there to back it up. They need to get going like the Brian team is because this pass back into Armac. Armac going up for that one as well. Getting a little bit of an awkward touch on it, but it's good enough. And there's the Brazil. That is unfortunate. I don't think, though, that we are going to end on a Brazil scoreline. One way or another, we're going to see something different. But what a little... It looked like an attempt at a pogo or something here, but it ends up just catching ball and car at the ground at the same time. Rolls back to that far corner and a double commit out of URG, make sure there's nobody home to finish that one off. And it's one of the issues we're seeing out of URG is they're challenging either at the wrong time or not at all. We need to see them find a way to settle their rotation, get a player up in the face of Bryant, get challenges up. You have three, you can afford to be, be a little bit more aggressive. As here we see another one coming back the other way, and that one doesn't find the mark, but it's a yet another threat out of Bryant towards the URG net. And I think they really need to capitalize on Lil Pickle. He's shown good form and, and good speed. A speed that can keep up in this matchup. They're currently not utilizing him as much as Lil Pickle takes it out to the side as well. Misses the ball completely. Thus, proving my point to be completely wrong for that instance, I guess. Nobody actually converging, converging on this ball. And it just lies laid dead there in the center for a little bit. And they might actually be able to keep on leading by six goals and keep the Brazil intact. Yeah, this is, I honestly didn't expect to see the Brazil stay intact one way or another, but we still have 10 seconds left. Can they find one more for the road? That's a cross, and that looks more like time kill than anything. I think they'll allow this one to draw, and you may be right. We're actually going to see a Brazil here in game number two, barring this last shot just needs to touch the ground, still throwing that one towards the net. Finally, it finds the ground for that Brazil scoreline, and I do realize I need to uh, do one thing here real quick. I apologize if you want to you wanna take a second here. I, I must say that every time you say one way or another, a song pops into my head and I really have to make sure that I don't start singing it, copyright issues and everything like that. Um, <laughs> but it just, it just instantly starts playing in my head. I absolutely love it. Well... URG isn't loving right now is conceding seven goals in two games in a row now. It's not really a great look for them now. No, and I think the big issue they're having right now is that speed, that aggression issues related to that. They're not getting up in the face of Bryant. They're not bringing effective challenges. They're allowing Bryant to have tons of space and time to make the plays they want to make. The one thing I do like out of URG, we have seen them clear the zone. Both teams struggle a little bit with that. And what that means for URG is they get time in the offensive end. They get opportunities to attack, re-attack, and make plays in the offensive end. They're just not capitalizing. We saw 
all the way midway through game number one where they did a great job. Lil Pickle carried that ball down. They got a demo. They got a bump. They kept the contain in. But no one was there to help them out. They need to be less afraid of getting scored on the back end. They need to be more aggressive going upfield and try to find those opportunities, support their teammates, and look for the back of the net. At this point, the defense is already shattered. You should be all offense all the time. Yeah, you, you got to use those shards that are created in defense and start throwing them like little shurikens or something at the opponent. Trying to be a little bit venomous. Try and put and inflict little damage somewhere. Put a threatening shot on target every once in a while. Make them scared. Because this is a triple commit. Lil Pickle, can he convert this into a goal? No, he decides to take it out to the side. And that's why two players are already getting back. That's a decent demo. But then Lucky Ducky misses the ball completely. A lot of them was happening. And I love to see this from URG. They're, they're being more physical. They're being more aggressive. And it might just lead to a goal. They just need to keep it up. They need to be consistent. The one downside to this strategy is it makes you that much more vulnerable getting beat on the back end. But Lil Pickle doing a good job not allowing that offensive opportunity to develop. They're getting very quickly to that ball. They're getting very aggressive trying to take away those opportunities and just not allow Bryant the space to make plays that they need. And here they are finding a way to get this one in front of the net. Missed touch, but it's still lurking in the front and there's no one there. All three players commit to try to get that one in front of the net. And unfortunately, that leaves no one home to finish it off. Oh my word, that was one of the best opportunities that they've gotten, apart from actually scoring a goal that early on in the matchup. They're showing a different form out of themselves, though. And now it is Brian on the offense, and they're showing the exact same form. Armac cut the forefront of it and scoring another one here. I mean, not another one in this matchup, but another one on the record for him. Absolutely, and I think the big thing here to note, at least in favor of URG, is this is the longest they've held out without getting scored on by Brian. A minute and 19 seconds from this matchup. They're keeping this one closer. That one threatening off the kickoff, but touched away. They just need to find that magic in the offensive end. They're starting to settle on the defense a little bit. It's that one. Another threatening opportunity. They just can't quite find the finish. It seems as if... URG, they're getting a lot more space because of Brian. They're just feeling comfortable. They're feeling positive about their gameplay and just going at it with full force, trying to get everything going, putting a, putting a few double commits on the board there as well, which is not really the strategy that you want to go for. A good shot coming on target from the Ramsey. That is a very delicate touch and a delicate team play here as well. Wow, what a, what a shot. Threading the needle through there, keeping this one tied up. 3-17 remaining, and you love to see them keep this competitive. They're down heavily in the series. It's match point in favor of Bryant, but it's kind of where you find out what they're made of on the match point. Can they pull this one back? Do they keep their minds in it? So far, they're doing a good job. Yeah, so far they are. And Honestly, goals don't really matter that much. Series very much do. You want to, you just want to sweep your opponent if you can, and not really mess about as much and drop a series and then regain yourselves. Because that means a drop series. That's going to be on your record. That's not really going to be great if you ever need a tiebreaker situation or something like that. And this is pops into the center as well. That's a very good touch. Armac. Oh, phenomenal save by Lucky Ducky. And that's no luck. That's just pure skill saving that one. Out to the side. And a Ramsey trying to convert on that opposing side. That's, that might have to be on target. That is on target. But it's just a little bit too slow. And Liam gets back in time. And then, oh my word. Then Armac just takes it into, into the other goal. Well, we're seeing the most competitive matchup we have yet between these two teams, but it still lends itself in favor of Bryant. Just past halfway in this game, they're still finding a way to continue to connect to make themselves meet in the midfield, doing a great job of opening up those opportunities with those transition plays. And transition is looking incredibly well on the Bryant side. It has been for the longest amount of time. They weren't really able to show that off that much. Now it's three men back, they're bumping each other. This is a very, very awkward situation. Lucky Ducky tries to get that one into the center for his team. It's a decent recovery on the side. Well, now Ramsey trying to be underneath to get that one, to pick that one up in a cherry picking location. He did not find any cherries. The only thing that he found was some eaten cherries as they're getting it towards the other side, or at least trying to. But honestly, URG, I very much love how they're playing right now. They're genuinely showing a completely different side of themselves. It's like we mentioned a little bit earlier, is they do a good job of containing for a good amount of time. But here's a shot over the top, and that's such an awkward cut for the Ramsey there. 
trying to get back to that one. And it's such a tough spot to be looking back over your shoulder as the ball comes over the top of your head. It's incredibly disorienting. It's a tough one to make. And unfortunately, that two goal lead is going to bring a lot of pressure down on URG. They need to find a way to close that one quickly, or I fear this one's going to be over at about the 60 second mark. Yeah, that very well could be. Because I already said at the 2-0 kind of, well, if Ryan managed to get ahead 2-0, then it's, it's going to be lights out for URG. Probably they have shown a completely different side, but on the ground, they very much look similar. In the air, though, they are worlds apart. Lee, I mean, did a little bit of a ground play there. Now Armac trying to go to that backboard. Waiting patiently. That's not the greatest touch. Getting that over another one as well. And Lawrence is up for it. So Pickle manages to edge him out. They're not out of defense just yet. They still need to hold on or break out it because they are still two goals down. They need to have that transition on point. Very good catch by Lawrence. Taking it out to the side. 68 boosts. It's Liam on the ceiling. Lawrence tries to go alone. Drops into Armak and then it gets blocked by Liam. They don't transition on it though. It's, it's so critical to get these transition plays right now, especially when you get these opportunities. But here's Ramsey scrambling back the other way and misses this one. And that's it's, it's a, something we've seen them plagued by is when you get low boost, players have a nasty habit of turning away. That one just off the backboard. And Lawrence with the save here, keeping that one away from the net. But the onslaught continues in favor of Bryant. And as the clock ticks down, I fear this is the end for URG in this series. And they did a much better job here in game number three, but with 10 seconds remaining and Bryant back on the attack, there it is. That, I think, is going to be the nail in the coffin, and it just was a dominating victory from Bryant. Yeah, this final final one and a half minutes or so was for you, or G, was kind of as you were sitting in the corner in Call of Duty with a riot shield while you're getting shot at with a machine gun. You are not dying. You're not necessarily in a bad position but you're also not able to break out of it and then at some point well the right shield is not good enough they throw a semtex on your shield and that's going to be game over urg once again gets swept that's an unfortunate season start for urg we saw some things here that were that bode well for urg and how they've managed themselves throughout this series but unfortunately they just got outclassed by bryant just about every way shape and form bryant was able to meet them in the air, meet them on the ground, outplay them through the air, like you said earlier. But then they also did a great job of managing their spacing on their field. They were always able to find a pass. They were always able to bring a challenge to the ball whenever URG had the ball without double committing, without abandoning their backside. And it seemed like Bryant could manage two attacks at the ball for every one, maybe even less for URG. And that's just not a good conversion rate. You, you got to be doing something better than that. That's not what happened. They get another sweep on their record. It's it's starting to look dire. Obviously, this is only week two, but getting swept twice. Well, week three, you're really going to have to start playing. You really have to start practicing, getting that team chemistry in there so you can come back stronger the third week. It's definitely a possibility to just get that key team chemistry. You probably won't be able to improve on mechanics a massive amount in that time, but still you can work on that team play and that is something with a university team team play is going to be incredibly important as soon as you are able to play with your team properly and, and get that chemistry going you can probably beat people who are more mechanical than you yeah if you can out team play you can outplay a more mechanical team to a point to a point if you have someone that absolutely eclipses your team mechanically, then there's only so much you can do. But I think the gap here was small enough that, like you said, if you can out team play, you could take down a superior team. We are going to be looking for a post game interview here. Maybe we can get some notes on that team play from one of the players here from Bryant. But in the meantime, say you need your esports team managed well, Meta Pro Gaming. Is the team is the group for you. Meta Programming is a full service esports management developmental and consulting company. Meta provides esports coaching, college esports management, arena design, and equipment. You can visit them, metaprogaming.gg to learn more. Also, you can see me here. I'm on a on a on a hard wooden <laughs> chair from our kitchen table because I'm on the road at the moment. But at home, you know the chair you need to have Respawn. Respawn products are forged for all-day comfort for content creators, professional and casual players, and everyone looking to upgrade their setup. Respawn has been battle-tested 
and achieves a level of comfort that leaves competitors in the dust. Live to play another day with Respawn, your battle ready partner. Oh boy. And also in the meantime, we have we got so many sponsors. Hey, support the people that support us. We only get to bring you all of this exciting Rocket League action with the support of our sponsors. Speaking of which, I had hardware issues tonight. If you couldn't tell, I should have gone to HyperX for some hardware. The HyperX mission has been to develop gaming products for all types of gamers, high speed memory, solid state drives, headsets, keyboards, mice, charging accessories for card console players, USB flash drives, and mouse pads to the gaming community and beyond. HyperX gear is the choice of celebrity ambassadors, pro gamers, tech enthusiasts, and overclockers worldwide because it meets the most stringent product specifications and is built with best in class components. Now, as we wait for our Mac, you don't have to hear me talk anymore. I fear you. I think you have a couple more people that are very deserving of a mention here. Oh, very much so. And obviously, sometimes you're like, no, I don't want to buy all that. I don't want to have all that in my in my home. That's where Helix Esports comes uh, comes in. They offer world-class gaming and virtual reality experience at state-of-the-art esports centers throughout the United States. So you don't have to buy anything yourself. You can just go to Helix and they'll have everything set up for you. And they deliver a professional esports experience to everyone. Whether gamers choose to play, practice, and socialize with friends at or compete at the highest level, Helix Esports is the premier destination for gamers. Follow Helix Esports today at Helix Esports USA. And you know what? That is probably going to be enough ad rules because we've got someone in here now who's been rolling in the goals left and right. Armac, how are you doing today? Pretty good, guys. Pretty good. Well, that was a, uh, a commanding victory you had there over the team representing URG. And obviously you had a wonderful series. You put a lot of goals in. I think I lost count somewhere around the midpoint of game number two. What do you think was the key to being able to have those that many scoring opportunities? I mean, the guys that I play with, my two teammates, I mean, they're just mechanically really good. I mean, I was just there at the right place, right time, banging home goals. They were doing all the real work on it. I mean, I think our team's pretty good mechanically and we're getting our synergy together right now. So I think it was just, we're all over them. We're moving together well, and I was just there to clean up for them. Well, it was definitely something we noted going through that series was that ability for Bryant as a team, for you guys as a team, to bring that repeated attack, to manage your spacing on the field, and get, just get everybody involved on those shooting opportunities. And, and, you know, my philosophy has always been, it's great when you have a player that can pop off and score a bunch of goals, but you only get to do that with a solid team behind you. So I just, I'm kind of curious, how long have you guys been playing together? Um, so two of us have been together for about a year now, but then one of our new guys, this is only our second or third series playing with them, actually, uh, Liam are there. So our team's still kind of getting together, still kind of clicking. It's in the times, as you could probably have noticed in the game, but I mean, we're all friends. We're getting to know each other pretty well right now, and I think pretty soon we'll really start clicking and firing on all cylinders. It's a great start to the season. I mean, obviously not ideal in that first one, but to come back from that first series, of the season and come out here with a dominating 3-0 sweep over URG. That's a great way to get some momentum going in to the next week. I fear you. I'm sure you're <laughs> itching to literally itching to ask some questions <laughs> over here. Uh, perfect. Gonna, I already knew you were going to say over. that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're on the topic of first weeks and, and a new player in there. Is that something that you guys had to adjust to when you guys feel as if you're getting stronger every single week? Um, so, I mean, our, at first, our play styles, we just kind of have to figure each other out a bit, figure out who likes to do what, who's comfortable being up, who's comfortable sitting back a bit. It was, it was a little bit of an adjustment, and I think it kind of showed in our first game. I mean, it was, it was a really close one. I think it went overtime game five. I mean, I think it was just a few small mistakes here and there, but as we've been practicing, scrimming, playing and stuff, we've been cleaning up our game a lot more. We're really starting to click now, and I think as we go on, it's only going to get better. And do you guys think that... Well, having, having a sweep this week will we'll give you guys the confidence that you need to just get this into the rest of the season and just completely duke it out with everybody. Because obviously, you guys showed a great performance, but is, is the confidence there, or do you guys kind of get down on yourselves looking uh, last week, for example? Um, the confidence is definitely there. I mean, we took, I mean, the first day kind of sucked, but I mean, right after that, we forgot right about it. We're on to the next game. And I mean, at this point, we'll probably be happy about this game, but I mean, we still got a lot more games to play. So looking forward one game at a time, one series at a time. And I mean, winning three, I was nice, but we still have a lot more to play. Very true. Very true. It's always a rocket league is a, is an up and up road and you're <clears> never really at the end, but 
Oh, sometimes you are at the end of interviews. I want to thank you so much, Oramak, and you keep on banging in those goals left and right. I want to see more of that coming weeks and go and grad celebrate with your team for the victory tonight and uh, hope so hopefully talk to you later. All right, great. Thanks, guys. Have a good one. Well, as we get ready to go here, we mentioned get to see some more of our Mac. And I know, Iferia, if you want to talk about where we can see some more of this Rocket League action, I think that's the last thing we're going to do before we bring you more exciting Rocket League action. <laughs> twitch.tv slash necc underscore esports no that is obviously where where it all starts but then you need to see that somewhere on, on other things as well and that's where estv is absolutely phenomenal and they're the first ever dedicated channel for esports and gaming personalities such as myself obviously and large with gaming personalities <laughs> and the, yeah, it's the first channel devoted 24-7. Esports coverage can be found on a number of OTT platforms, including the Roku channel, Amazon Fire TV, Samsung TV Plus, the Plus version, of course. It always throws me for a loop. Sling TV and Visio Free Watch. ESTV partners with the world's top gaming networks and production partners for the most robust esports content lineups on linear, online, and mobile. For more information, please visit EST v.co and that is obviously it's been it's been all the sponsors massive shout out to every single one of them want to thank them obviously and thank you all go thank you all for being here in the chat as well that is not going to be the end of the stream we've got more matches coming up tonight but that will only happen after a short little bra break see you back in a bit the music. Just rocket. Other stuff works, but rock. Hey, boss.
Yeah, it's rough. That's that is.
Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, for some more NECC action. We've got another exciting matchup for you here tonight. Moving up a division into Division Two for University of Southern Mississippi versus Boise State Orange. Both these teams coming off kind of a struggle in the preseason. One of these teams picking up a win in week one and the other one still floundering, looking for a little bit of momentum. I am going to be your color cut again. My name is Lars Newton. Joining me once again here in the casting booth is Hyferia. Hyferia, right off the bat, University of Southern Mississippi or Boise State Orange, what's your prediction? Because we didn't get to it last time. Ooh, an instant, <laughs> instant prediction. Honestly, there's not really a lot to go off of here. Obviously, in the previous one, it was quite clearly with the preseason and everything who was on paper the better one. Here, that's not the case. They they both have close results or, or decent results, at least in the preseason. And then, well, Somis did lose the first week, two to three, incredibly close against St. Ambrose and Boise State. They won three to one against Fresno State Red. I don't know. I, I, <laughs> it's the second team of Boise State. And always with second teams, I feel like they, they always get that experience from the first team kind of integrated as well. So my bet is going to be on Boise State. Honestly, not really based on a law. Well, I like your logic there of when teams are bringing lots of high-profile players to the to the match. You know that they're getting a lot of that uh, in inside practice, those in-house scrims that are so useful and so great for improving everybody as a whole, not just one team or the other. Gets lots of good mix and match there, and you can allow each other to train back and forth. I actually was a, actually was a boxer in college, and there was one particular school who I won't mention who had a ton of in-house boxers and they tended to dominate the boxing scene because they got all that in-house experience. So I like your prediction of Boise State Orange, but I'm going to go ahead and go with So Miss. Just to be a contrarian here, they did have that very, very close matchup versus St. Ambrose. They had kind of a tough preseason. It, you know, they swept Concordia, Nebraska, and they dropped two series in sweeps, but tougher teams preseason is going to be an interesting matchup. But the only way to find out, like we said in that last series, is to put these teams on the field and, and see who comes out the victor. Speaking of which, though, is the other way you would find out is maybe if they played each other before and in the state of Boise, in the, in the circumstances of Boise State Orange, Fresno State Red was one of their victories in the preseason in a 3-1 victory. And week number one of the regular season, Fresno State Red in a 3-1 victory. So uh, maybe a little bit of experience getting to come off that same team two in a row. Maybe they got an easier preseason. Who knows? And this shows to me that they've got at least a little bit of consistency, beating them in the same capacity, 3-1. to one. Um, Let's hope this time we don't have some scrambling going off from the get-go and we need to do a gentleman's agreement to return <laughs> a goal and everything <laughs> like that. Let's just hope we can get it clear cut. Everybody indirectly, a great match from the start. Uh, I'm expecting a lot. We're going up a division, and we already saw some very good mechanics coming out in the previous game. I'm only looking to extend that and to see whether they may, might actually be able to pull off some insane plays. Well, what do you think is going to be the deciding factor in this series? I know in the last series, we talked a bit about how the mechanical disparity between those two teams led to be kind of a factor, but how team play was really the decider and that speed and aggression, that ability to manage spacing on the field in favor of Bryant was the, was the thing that allowed them to take command. What here in this Div 2 series is going to be the key to taking up victory? I'm always a man who likes to say brains over mechanics. So good positioning, <clears throat> smart positioning, making sure you fill the gaps. But we're going to have to see that right now because obviously we can waffle all we want. We can say whatever we want. It all needs to come down on the battlefield, on this Rocket League pitch. It all needs to go down. And Toxic is starting us off with a demo circuit, trying to close that distance very quickly. Zero boost and tank. That's going to give him a very long recovery. But Thunder Armour, he's going to into Toxic. And Toxic, he's going into the back of the net. And the explosive start coming out from BSU. Lots of quick starts here tonight. 17 seconds in. Nice little bit of air roll there to put a little bit of flash on that easy touch home over the top. That's a great way to get that ball to the net attack from the corner get that one out in front don't you know i talked a lot about going to the back wall you can get a lot of advantage not going to that back wall getting that through the midfield opens up the net very nicely and we see it here as <clears throat> excuse me toxic picks up the first of the match 
And we already could see some micro mistakes coming out. Esper, he had 12 boosts left in the tank. He knew he wasn't gonna, going to reach that ball. He still uses boosts, thus slowing down the recovery. And those tiny things are going to make the difference in Thunderama. I mean, I guess it didn't, didn't really make a difference on this play. He just forces it through. There's a little bit of an awkward double commit here, but that's still a two-goal lead. That's a nice pass to the midfield by Toxic there. It's not something you typically expect to see out of players. You expect them to kind of drive upfield with every single touch bear. But Toxic, straight across the field, puts that one straight into the wall to pop it right back out and give that advantage to their teammate in the midfield. We're just seeing a lot of great ways to attack the front of the net, and that's so critical here is getting the ball into the shooting lane for a teammate to finish off. Somebody needs to be there, and that's always the thing with passing plays. Everybody on the play needs to be perfect. Now Leighton trying to get that to the other side. Can't really get a follow-up. Actually, no, he can't. He can't get that to the center where Esper is, and he's able to get that into the back of the net. Good team play, but Leighton, he got way too much time here. Yeah, Leighton able to touch that one home, and Esper able to tuck that into that nice corner. It wasn't a bad position from Thunderama. As you know, that back post is very advantageous in most defensive scenarios, but if you have a team that can find that far post from the defender, it's almost impossible to get there within time. Now, cutting that lead in half, it's a good... It's a good look off the bat here. Can they find a way to finish it off? Oh my word, I was incredibly scared for a second. I, I heard the mic and I was like, no, no, oh no, 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 please no. Uh, we're all good, we're all fine in Thunderama. He passes that to Toxic, great pass. Can he get the extension as well? This touch might not be the worst one. As Toxic actually is able to try and get Ripper short. He gets shut down incredibly early. This is not really the greatest pass because there's none of his teammates there. It is an opponent. Late and he passes it to Esper who could rip a short. Saved by Sirkin and Toxic trying to go the other end. Toxic is already looking at like a very attack in mind a player on the side of Boise. Van Apple back into the corner. He doesn't have any boost and talks a great recognition. Gets that sensor late and clears that out, but it's not really the greatest clear. Van Apple, that's also not the greatest clear. The circuit to the backboard. Thunderama coming in for a shot blocked by Van Apple, and they're holding on to this defense for now. Doing a good job of keeping that ball clear of the shooting lane, like I mentioned earlier, keeping it away from the attack. And there's one back into the mid. A great read off the back wall. Take advantage of an awkward rotation on the side of BSU here and able to finish this one off. Tie this one back up before halfway into this game and we're set for quite the matchup. Yeah, phenomenal stuff coming out from Somis. They, they really were on the defense pretty much the entire time. And then managed to break out, convert relatively quickly as well. So on the side of Boise, they need to convert more. They need to turn that pressure into opportunities, into scoring, this goal being scored, Thunderama, that was basically an open net, off to the side, and Toxic, he's going to look whether he can make that into a scoring opportunity, but no, circuit into the center, Van Apple, the strategy of just sitting on the goal line, and defending it out, is proven to be working for the side of Southern Mississippi. The one thing I worry about is is they're allowing lots of attack down towards the net. The one thing that isn't developing is good, solid shooting opportunities, but it is threatening very close again and again as that one's past Bad Apple, but just wide, touched away. Now follow-up, looking for the dunk, doesn't find it. Thunderama looking for the double off the wall, gets this one to center circuit, doesn't get to it first, and we continue to see big bump here. It's open net, just need to finish it. No one's oh, no. there in time, oh, no. all the way back the other way. Toxic just scrambles, and I can't even get a point out because these teams, they're getting lots of looks towards the net, but like I was saying earlier, not a lot of them developing into actual shooting opportunities, and I like the pressure, but we need to find a way to make it more effective. Let's look for some bumps and some demos on smart rotations through the mid and then get good, accurate shots on net. Yeah, these are always incredibly intense, and this is exactly why there's so many opportunities, so much pressure, and at some point it just has to crumble, and it seems as if BSU are struggling to keep that defense locked side there, letting their opponents break through way more than they should. It's, it's just not really that great of a look in BSU. They've actually only got two shots, even though they've really been the attacking minded team on the offense. And Cirque got bumped out of the way. Toxic is able to rip another shot, saved by Bad Apple. Cirque into the center once again, but then Bad Apple just breaks away. Thunderama, can he save that? No, he missed it. And the pressure, this just proves that pressure is not everything in Rocket League. No, it, it always throws me for a little bit of a loop when a team can maintain so much offensive pressure 
and find themselves on the downside of the scoreboard. It's always interesting to me to see that happen because at the end of the day, usually pressure is what wins championships. The ability to continuously attack, to continuously maintain pressure. And speaking of pressure, Esper just off the post doesn't find that one in. But here, BSU, like you said, they're doing a great job keeping this one downfield. They're getting good looks towards the net. They're just not finishing it off. Here's an opportunity. Three players required to clear that one away. Again, BSU just not getting there fast enough. It seems as if BSU was sitting far back, not wanting the breakout to happen, but that is exactly how they're inviting that breakout. Now they've got 26 seconds left. They've got only a little bit of time remaining. This needs to be defended out of the woods. They can't forget this match. And Toxic with that miss might already have to forget this match because 15 seconds is not a lot to come back. You need a goal right now, and then after that, you need a good kickoff. But currently, it is still so miss in control of this ball, or at least BSU not fully in control. 15 in the midfield and that is going to conclude this game and BSU they have had all the pressure so promising start but they need to get out more because so miss as you see will be the victor of the initial this initial game looking good on the counter I think the one thing to note here is we saw BSU spent so much time down in the offensive end they did a great job containing they did a great job attacking that back wall but just look at this stat line here three shots on net. And I know Rocket League doesn't do a great job of counting what's actually a shot on net and what's not. Excuse me, four shots on net. But it does do a, give you a good directional feel of who's getting an effective attack, attack and who's not. If the, you could spend that much time attacking down in the, in the offensive end and still be outshot by your opponents, that doesn't look good for how you're using those shooting opportunities, how you're taking advantage of the opportunities as they're presented. And on the flip side, allowing a team that is just really getting those quick transition plays and not establishing that offensive rotation to score four times on seven shots and outshoot you in the process, you need to find a way to disrupt that transition play and capitalize on opportunities as they present themselves. Yeah, this is, is looking like something that we talked about in the last series where it's a great strategy to put the ball wide and let somebody else score it. They're going for this a lot, but then on repeat they're not really getting further than the first step of putting it wide mm -hmm. and then the next one puts it wide as well the other one puts it wide that just keeps on happening continuously so they, they need to have somebody who actually says okay i'm shooting this on target we're getting this going we're moving on and we're going to make sure the pressure that we have just keeps on going on and we are able to convert that. They can't get too greedy. They need to be able to hold their defense strong as well, but we're going to have to see that in this second game. It is going to be a tough matchup for BSU. They need to regain themselves. They need to grab themselves by the bootstraps, pull them up, and get going in this matchup, and they definitely can do it. Toxic, 26 boost, trying to get that center. It's not really the greatest takeoff. He does get a touch past Bad Apple. That's in the Rama. Might be going to be able to go for a solo, but it gets bumped in the process. Maybe it doesn't matter that much. For certain, it doesn't matter because he still comes from behind wow that's a great follow-up from bsu and a good way to start this one off esper getting the touch on thunderama to take away that double touch opportunity but circuit makes a great read a good quick upfield rotation to capitalize on that one and finish it off and that's exactly what we asked for capitalize i'm sure you're sick of hearing it at this point but until we see these teams do it consistently we're going to keep saying it because that's what's going to be necessary to win these these games here and Leighton, he's looking to capsulize on that opportunity as well. Talks it going into the center. Oh my word, Thunderama actually is there. Esper is completely prepared for it though. Thunderama, all he can do is go for a corner boost to a circuit. Close the distance on Esper. Talks it with a phenomenal chance. Might be able to go in, into the offense. He can't beat Bad Apple. And that is good enough for Esper to get that ball out for now. But once again, the pressure is surmounting it. Oh my word, where was this the last game? This was an absolute boomer. This is a gorgeous infield pass, a great read from Thunderama. Send that one over to Circuit, and they managed to do it with speed and aggression. They didn't just make a nice lofty pass across the mid. They didn't slow down, take their time, and now when they saw the transition opportunity, they took away that clear, and they finished it with authority. 
And definite authority, and that's only a minute into this match. They weren't happy with that previous result. Um, well, the shooting man stepped up circuit. Two shots, two goals. And Thunderama with both assists. And, well, I guess Toxic, he will get a goal on the board for himself as well. I don't know what's happened here. Either Somis have just completely given everything up, or BSU are just another level right now. It's a wildly different game than we saw in game number one. With BSU, they finally started to click. They finally found a way to make this work together, and now they're finishing it off. Sir, he's trying to finish that one off. Leighton gets in the way of it, though. That's Thunderama onto the side. Going to bounce off the backboard. I don't know whether anybody noticed, but Thunderama did get that corner boost. Still. It doesn't really matter if you still concede on the counter attack. The circuit gets past one. Thunderama reinforcing him from behind. Circuit once again gets past one. Not really the greatest touch coming out from Thunderama. The toxic goes to the backboard. Leighton gets the clear out. And it's looking as if Somis are able to regain themselves a little bit and calm this game down. The one thing they haven't been able to do, though, is establish an offensive pressure and offensive rotation. They've got one shot on net to Ooh. the five in favor. Now six in favor of BSU, leading to four goals. This is less than two minutes into this game. They're already up by four. That's plenty of time to get it back the other way. Obviously, four goals in less than two minutes is possible. But with the way they're just getting outclassed right now by Boise State, they need to find a way to disrupt that. And I, and I hate to be a broken record, but go back, get some of those bumps, get some of those demos, and try to take advantage of disrupting this team play and the speed and consistency we're seeing right now out of Boise State. Yeah, especially because the last game, we already saw some incons inconsistencies in the defense. Letting through a lot of counterattacks, Toxic, he probably won't be able to get much further because he has a zero boost in the tank. Still got a relatively far circuit. He also doesn't have a lot of boost. I don't think the surmounting pressure will come and this time since the boost is very much lacking indeed. Bad Apple, he's cutting a lot of time. But what, does he use that time? No, not at all. It's circuit going into the corner, into the center, where Thunderama will be waiting. Doesn't manage to get in to get a shot off. Esper actually wears the entire defense. Toxic comes in from behind and gets that one into his own corner. This is looking a little bit scary for BSU. They need to keep that defense look tight and they've done such a great job up to this point of getting that ball clear not allowing opportunities to develop and now we're seeing so miss finally 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 find some offensive pressure they just still struggle to get the ball effectively towards the net they've only picked up one more shot on goal and they're still not finding a way to sneak it past this defense i'd like to see them get to this ball a little bit quicker in the offensive end just because you're not getting your net threatened doesn't mean you have time to sit and wait on it and he's to always keep up that speed. Speed is a pivotal part of Rocket League and Esper. He was trying to go a little bit too speedy there. Missing the ball completely in the process. Now Esper on the sidewall. What can he do? He can get a fifth with Thunderama. Toxic, he's trying to stay underneath, but that's not really the greatest positioning. Because usually you'll be beat by your opponents. So you don't really know whether you're getting beat. So you're, you're, you're basically just jumping in blind. Lane, that's since a bad apple. They need to get a goal going relatively soon because four goals in one and a half minutes is already a tough enough task. Obviously, if that is a tough task, the further the clock ticks down, the tougher the task is going to be. Also, not able to convert on this position. The circuit goes to the backboard. They might be able to convert this one. Talks against a complete open net, puts in the 5 0, and that might just seal the deal. That's going to be very tough for so miss to make a comeback here they've been allowing this first with that offensive pressure bsu being able to find good quick rotations in the offensive end attack that backboard and get follow-up shots and also allowing them to hit those transition plays it means you can really be attacked from anywhere on the field it's dangerous territory you need to shut that down especially looking at the previous game it was a little bit of a mismatch from BSU, they they weren't able to get going, but now they're going, and that must be scary for Somis. They they are also looking at that previous game, thinking, "Oh my word, we destroyed them! What a bump coming on there against Lane! They should still be able to convert. And indeed, they are. Esper puts that one in, gets credited with it, but Lane he had a completely open net, wanting to turn in, just got bumped out of the way. This is what we asked for out of Somis: get disruptive, get quick follow-up attacks demo the defenders disrupt their defense and punish them for it. great job finishing that one off but 40 seconds to go 
four goals down, that's going to be very difficult to finish off. The good news is if they can pick up one more goal here without getting scored on, they carry good momentum into game number three and can hopefully set themselves up on match point. It's always tough to remain or retain that momentum. You really have to keep in that same flow, and sometimes your opponents are just able to break through, and then you're kind of wondering by yourself as well, how do we now lose this one all of a sudden? What happened after the previous one? What are we doing wrong? Thunderama, a slight inaccuracy. It doesn't really matter that much if you're up five to one. Circus should be able to score that at the one second mark. So we will have another kickoff. Unfortunately, it's not going to matter at all. Maybe the Brazil though. Yeah, this this is a is a absolute dagger in the heart for So Miss being able to push that last goal in there and any kind of momentum they had built up with that one goal at about the 42nd mark on it's dead and there's a shooting opportunity almost for the almost for the Brazil but they don't quite find it now we're one to one in the series this is as close as we've seen it yet here tonight and it comes on kind of an interesting mix here so miss able to just kind of walk on bsu through game number one did a good job getting pressure in the transition getting good effective shots on net and out shooting bsu despite spending more time on the defensive back foot now here flipping flipping the table a little bit bsu gets better offensive pressure downfield and is more effective to the transition they made beautiful pass plays up field. I think that's the big note here is that pass play that passing game through the midfield is so effective. If you can accurately find your teammates like that, you're doing a great job. So Miss, on the other hand, struggling a little bit to find those connections, managing their spacing, and get effective challenges. And we're going to have to see how they will be able to come out in that third game. For me, it's already phenomenal. This is, the, as you said, the first time this evening that it goes longer than three games, for sure. We don't have to wait for that final game to potentially see a comeback happening. No, we've got more than three games of Rocket League, everyone. Phenomenal stuff coming in already on, on that department, on content department. But they still need to prove themselves. We've kind of seen one-sided matchups where it was so miss in the first one and Boise in the second one. And now I really want to see them combine the powers and, and just clash at full force. It kind of when an unstoppable force meets an immovable object. I, I want to see that happen. Um, I, I have to do this because I'm a huge nerd. But uh, fun fact, those are actually the, the same, same thing. thing. An unstoppable mm -hmm. force and an immovable object are the exact same thing. But they also, actually, also know the answer is what happens when they meet. Nothing. But uh, that's not what we have for you here. We have more Rocket League action in just a second here. We do a little bit of a server reset. So I'm going to take advantage of the moment that we have here to go ahead and let you know about Meta Pro Gaming. Meta Pro Gaming is a full service esports management, developmental, and consulting company. Meta provides esports coaching, college esports management, arena design, and equipment. Visit them at metaprogaming.gg to learn more. Perfect for us here in this collegiate esports scene and maybe maybe something some of these teams can take advantage of going forward because it's it's been a little bit rough tonight we've seen a couple of sweeps a couple of rough matchups and these teams i think it's a team cohesion issue they got to spend more time working together and and figuring out where they are on the field i think that's the biggest thing is if you know not just where you are on the field but where your teammates are on the field you can do a much better job of of committing to plays playing faster playing more decisively without getting those double commits and without having to calm everything and that's huge if you can shorten that decision loop by having good chemistry with your team it makes an enormous difference in your gameplay oh my word uh, <laughs> till the end of that i was trying to figure out whether it was an ad loop or are you talking about the game coming up i thought HyperX was going to come <laughs> oh no, no but very very true yeah you need to make sure that you have the best connection and then just you can work with your team into perfection you know where your team is going to be and you know what to expect from your team as well if you're sitting there thinking oh yeah no my teammate he'll score that double tap i'll just leave to the side already i'll have a great time sitting at the corner booths because that's what i like to do after a goal gets scored what chance is that he misses it and then you're not there putting the entire rotation in an awkward position so you really need to 
manage your expectations perfectly to what you can do and what your opponents can do and your teammates and that is a lot easier when you have comms you can early say early on say oh i'm missing but now game number three is on the board toxic and lane will kick us off with five minutes on the clock well, we are even in the series. This is going to be a critical one, setting up a team on match point. We have great momentum in favor of Boise State. Did that little bit of extra time. Go to the advantage of So Miss. And so far, it does not. 13 seconds in, and Thunderama from their own backboard finds that one all the way downfield. Yeah, I guess their name is a little bit on point here. So missed the ball because... That was not a great show from, I think it was Esther who completely whiffed there. It's an unfortunate scene, an unfortunate start. Toxic trying to get the angle. Bad Apple was back in net. Not really in a position to save a banger coming on. Bad Apple, he's actually trying to go the other way. Easy save by Circuit. It's a very routine save. But can they keep it out as well? Can they make sure that this pressure doesn't come on? Because that is something that we need to see out from Somis. Their opponents have been able to do that perfectly. Now we also need to see from their opponents. Circuit, Circuit going to the backboard. Oh my word, double miss coming in. It's Toxic trying to pass it to Circuit. It was a little bit too far up. The thing I'm seeing here is we're not keeping the ball close on either side. And threes is a game mode very much so about speed and speed management. You can spend a lot of time flying around the field being aggressive. And that's exactly what you need in the threes game mode. But when you have space and time like Circuit does here, slow down. That's a great little soft touch. Thunderama to the mid, bounces that in. And then Circuit, you can see them take it off the wheels and just touch that one softly into the net, the rubber of those wheels, getting that nice and cradled down in the net. And there you go, speed and speed management. That finds number two in favor of Boise State. And Bad Apple, he was actually somewhat prepared for that as well. He was sitting back a little bit with Thunderama. Oh my word, this is looking like the same Boise that we see, that we saw in the previous one. Just absolute dominance and very early on as well, getting a three goal lead. This is not looking good for So Miss. Their confidence has kind of crumbled and their defense, something that kept so strong in that first game is now crumbling as well. So Miss needs to get this one back under control. You hear me talk a lot about 90 seconds. Let's talk about 90 seconds here. Less than 90 seconds in. We got four goals. That's a great little upfield play. Leighton picks up the boost and recognizes this momentum shift. And Esper leading out front for that bump demo attempt to get that ball clear. And you don't even have to touch the defensive player in that situation. Just that presence can be enough to disrupt that defensive effort, as you see here, to get the first goal for So Miss in this game number three. And that's exactly where the communication comes in as well. Esper, I thought he would go for the shot, but he probably come, hey, no, I'm, I'm going for a bump. Thus, his teammate knew, okay, I need to actually shoot this on target. Leighton did that perfectly and brings one back. Leighton now going off the ceiling as well. Toxic is there first. Well, this is get a massive boom and clear out. Pick up the 100 pad, continue this offense. Bad Apple, that is a terrible clear out. And then, well, Circuit, he's sitting far back. And the touch on the offense wasn't too great either. Leighton with a micro, macro touch back into his teammate. Can they manage to keep this one going? Bad Apple, he's putting that to the backboard. Leighton, they can take a shot. It's going to bounce up perfectly for Esper. Tries to go for the shot. Hits it with his belly button. That is going to be two weeks. Saved by Thunderama. The pressure coming in is a lot better right now. Something I like to see out of both these teams is that midfield challenge play. Both these teams have not been shy about meeting that ball at the midfield and not allowing the other team to just get a quick transition. Quick shot down on the corner for Toxic touched away by Leighton, but every once in a while it does find its way free, and then it becomes a challenge the other way of beating that midfield. And you see right there, they're even looking for it in that quick transition play there with a little bit more space, and it's exactly what you need if you want to establish dominance. One thing I would like to see is one of these teams be just a little bit more consistent in that contain that control yes yeah, really been a back and forth pretty much the entire time circuit be able to break away off of a great pass from thunderama and that's the four one well is that early massive dominance didn't come in from boise we would look at a tied game here, but so miss they, they just need to look it up from the start obviously that statement is 
has it's full of fallacies and, and misreasoning that <laughs> oh yeah we didn't have the first minute and a half of the game it would be a tight game well yeah obviously but that was also a part of the game and that's something that they need to work on come out of the gates shooting well you mentioned the first minute and a half i want to mention the last minute and a half this is something i talk about a lot when it comes to the psychology of how this game is played center pass for toxic doesn't find it that 90 second mark to me is a magical mark you have control of the game at the 90 second mark it puts so much pressure on your opponent it, it really secures the game for you is it possible for a team to come back yeah yeah it is that's an unfortunate own was that an own goal or did toxic just get a great read across the mid bit Mm, that was a very much an own goal. Oh, yeah. okay, that was Octarian, and bad right. apple. Well, he's certainly a bad apple in this one, scoring that into the back of his own net. Always oh. a little the wrong, the wrong way, having a little bit of um, momentary, momentarily color blindness. We hope he recovers very soon and doesn't score any more own goals because that now puts his team in, in a terrible position. Well, you know what they say, a bad apple spoils the bunch. And unfortunately here, it could be the spoiler in their attempt at a comeback here. But like I was saying, 90 seconds, it, it's one thing to be up by one goal at 90 seconds, but you don't really have control. What we've seen here is Boise State has been up by three, four, maybe even five goals in that last game at that 90 second mark. And it just leads to so much mental pressure on the back end that it's very, very difficult for all but the coolest of cucumbers to make a comeback. And this comeback is going to be incredibly hard. The serious comeback definitely still doable. It's going to be a, one hell of a task for them to, to come up against. That's always something you want to prove yourself and this is the moment to do it. If you can come back at least a little bit in this game, that is something I'm a firm believer in. If you end the game well, you're going to put yourself in a great position for the rest of the game. Toxic, he just allows Circus to try and go for the Ooh. shot. I don't really know oh. the decision making. And maybe that's why to because Circuit will score it. Because Circuit can pick corners just beautifully. Finding one of the very, very few spots, one of two spots you can put that ball and end with a goal. That is a gorgeous little touch in the back direction. And, and when you have confidence in your teammate, like we were talking about kind of in the minute intermission is knowing your teammates, so common with your teammates, having the confidence in their ability to effectively execute, like we saw between Toxic and Circuit there, allows you to be confident in your positioning and what you're doing. And that is another one now to the Brazil scoreline for Circuit. Wow. I thought the Sam Major was last week, and now it seems <laughs> as if a lot of Brazils are coming out. This is ridiculous. What is this, like the third one of this evening or something? I don't know what's going on, but it seems to be very dominant performances, and maybe that game was just a one-off. I'm not too sure, but Circuit, he's been playing phenomenal. He's got 100% goal involvement rate. Four goals, three assists for him on the board. Great stuff coming out. And now it's really up to Somis to come back and, and regather themselves. They, they need to start blooming again and blooming again. Need to get stuff going because that is not working out for them. It's not even necessarily that they're massively lagging on shots. We see nine shots, seven goals for BSU. Four shots and one goal for Somis. So yes, they have less shots, but the conversion rate also isn't the same. Yeah, this is BSU. Seven goals on nine shots. Absolutely deadly when they get that ball into a shooting position. They've done such a great job of finishing those opportunities. We've seen them be physical. We've seen them make passes. We've seen them make team plays. They had a rocky start. They finally tuned up. They have locked in. It is now, like you said, this is entirely on so miss. BSU has control. They've used the same play style through two games now. And we see this a lot in different series when you have longer series is you see teams develop their gameplay and how they're attacking the ball how they're challenging their opponents just change and shift over time and right now we're not seeing that out of so miss so miss able to walk that transition game through game number one bsu says hey we can do it and we can do it better now it's your turn balls in your court and you've only got one game to figure it out yeah, if you lose this one, you're obviously at a loss in the second week as well. You don't want to have that. You don't want to have another loss if you're so miss. 
If they go off of last week, we will see another game at least being played for them, but they need to get two in a row if they want to win this one. This is a decent start. Vesper had an opportunity, but now Lane, he can't miss this one. He can't have another bad start. It was off the bar. Bad Apple, he missed that one. Oh, Vesper is back for the save. Bad Apple trying to extend that one. Not really enough boost. He's trying to go for a solo play. Thus, he won't. Vesper with a decent challenge on the side wall. Lane, what can he do with that one? He can get it out to the side, but only as far as Thunder Armour, who's just waiting there. Well, we're seeing some good contain play here out of. Oh, oh no. <laughs> that is absolutely heartbreaking for so miss they controlled the first 33 seconds of this game they did such an excellent job keeping their shooting lane clear getting pressure downfield being aggressive getting attacks on the opponent's net and then just 150 shuts it all down now fellow caster Lichi, who i think you'll be hearing from later tonight um he loves to say game four is where you see what teams are made of. And this it's really going to be true here for Somis. Can they have the mental fortitude to not only come back from being down in the series, but come back from that heartbreaking momentum killer at the start of this game? Yeah, it's at least easier to say, oh, yeah, no, that was just an unfortunate 50. But this is not going to be an unfortunate 50. It's just a shot from Thunderama. Cirque, he's in an awkward position. Good touch out to the side, though. He's able to follow that one up. And Cirque, he's really running around, around the entire side of Somis. He just outplayed three defenders on defense right there to break out. And sometimes you just need that solo player to give your team a lot of space. Toxic, he got beat by his opponent. Esper has an opportunity. Shot on target. Cirque with a save, though. Bad Apple has an auto opportunity that shot is way too weak allows it to pass it into thunderama and then a long shot is for makes the save and the one goal lead remains intact it circuit right now feels absolutely comfortable they don't feel pressured at all everything they do feels like they have all of the confidence in the world that's always interesting to me as a caster watching players and teams and just being able to just get that general sense as thunderama over the top and now we're, we're slowing down the scoring pace of boise but we haven't shut it off so miss needs to hit that faucet and and flip on the other one and get back the other way honestly they just need a goal going for them especially because first of all that goes the lead in half Second of all, that gives them a little bit of confidence. Bad Apple has an opportunity to do so here. Circuit obviously is in the way. He's honestly such a phenomenal player on the side of BSU. He's really having the team on his back here a little bit and, and carrying them in a certain, to a certain extent. Layton, he's looking to do the, the exact same, trying to create an opportunity to Thunderama into Ooh. Circuit. Circuit, it's a shot. It's not a good shot, and it will be saved by Esper. Please tell me this is going to be saved. Oh, no, it's not. This is this is also not a great show. And that is uh, that is a yike. Unfortunately, Leighton miss flips here, and Bad Apple off the post. Can't get behind that ball. Allows that slow roller in, but it goes to something else that I like to talk about here, and that is clearing the shooting lane. It's not enough to stop the shot. It's not enough to get the save. If you leave the ball in the shooting lane, especially in threes, especially with teams like this, you're going to get punished for it. We see this here. They got the touch off the back wall. They took away that initial shooting opportunity, but left it for Thunderama to finish off and left their teammates in an awkward spot. Unfortunately for Somis, now more than half the game gone. This is match point in favor of Boise State, and they're down by three. I... I I hate to say it, but I think as far as we're going touchy-feely, this is how I feel things are. If Somis doesn't get a goal in the next 45 seconds or go, or so, this could be over. I like how you're still kind of sticking with that 90-second uh, indicator. Just cutting in in half because they don't have a lot of time. And late, you don't want to side flip on the shot that you have. It was such a great opportunity to try and get one back here. Nice for trying to get that into the center. Bad Apple did it a little bit of a 360. He's not really going to help him, though. Circa was still able to clear that out. Esper once again with an opportunity. Same with Thunderama, but that was a double commit. Triple commit coming in. They can do it better. They can go from a double to a triple. And they can't really manage to break out because of that. And Circa get, gets into the center, but that was a very good challenge. Thunderama gets the one out, and that should not have been allowed. They went from a double commit into a triple commit. You should be able to break out after that. <laughs> if you're, yeah, this is how this is how you're gonna win our LCS, all right? When you're triple committing, that's not a bad thing. That just means your team is on so much of the same page 
you have such mm. great cohesion, you're just going to walk through all CS. I'm kidding, of course. You never want to have three players committing at the same time. But at this point, it feels like it doesn't even matter. Boise can commit any kind of Rocket League sacrilege, Rocket League positioning crime, and they're just not getting punished for it back the other way. They're getting shots on net. And they're getting shots on net. Not really converting that much, but they don't need to. They're three goals up, 35 seconds remaining. Bad Apple needs to break away, needs to get out. And Circuit, you never want to see him up against you when he's in a shadowing position because he's been doing so phenomenal defense, keeping you out of there. And then also on the attack, he's just been a powerhouse throughout this matchup. Not only in this match, but just in, throughout the entire series. And with 15 seconds left, I think all they can hope for is another goal on the board and not concede this one. So we'll try one last time to go down the other end. Toxic stops that dead in its tracks and this is going to be the game. As soon as it drops to the ground, that will be Boise State winning this one after a weak first game performance, managing to run through their opponents. Yeah, this was, it felt like Boise didn't turn on their monitors until game number two and they just absolutely walked away with it. So miss kind of fell apart throughout the rest of this series. They had something that was working. Boise State did exactly what they need to do. They adapted, they overcame, and threw it right back in the face of So Miss. And So Miss didn't have any more tricks up their sleeve. They were a one trick pony throughout game number one. And that's not to say maybe this is just an off night for them. Maybe they're capable of more. But from what we see here up against Boise State, that was all they had, and, and they got beat. Yeah, sometimes you just have a have a game where you're as a team not really feeling it the way that you should be. You're not really <clears> managing <throat> to get going and well it, it showed. But the good thing about that is they they're able to regain next week potentially. We're gonna have to see though, because obviously that is this week's match for them done. A one, two, three loss on the side of So Miss. And they really need to be able to get something going. It, it kind of, being on defense the entire time in the first game, that puts you in a bad position. And it can work out for the first game because your opponent doesn't really have their shooting on. But as soon as they realize, hey, no, look, we've got enough time to shoot. So just take your time with shooting, put it in a good place, and don't try and go as speedy because we beat them on that speed. And that's exactly what happened. It worked for the first game, then they got torn apart. Yeah, and, and something to mention, I talked a little bit about like the psychology of Rocket League and how that kind of plays into how these games turn out. You mentioned that they spent the entire first game in the defensive end. Yes, they walked away with a victory, taking advantage of those transition plays, out shooting a more effective when it came to actually attack the net than Boise State. But one of the things that happens when you're in the defensive end and you spend so much time defending your net, it's mentally draining. It wears you out. And even if you get away with it, you're just tired going into the next series. And it's a very real effect going forward. But the thing I want to know is, does Circuit use HyperX products or Respawn products? What are those, you may ask, if you don't already know? First of all, where have you been? You see them everywhere. And with good reason, Respawn! Respawn products are forged for all-day comfort. Content creators, professional and casual players, or anyone looking to upgrade their setup, Respawn has been battle-tested and achieves a level of comfort that leaves competitors in the dust. Live to play another day with Respawn, your battle-ready partner. And HyperX, I mentioned it earlier, I could use a little HyperX myself. My tech issues here. HyperX, the HyperX mission has been to develop gaming products for all types of gamers. High-speed memory, solid-state drives, headsets, keyboards, mice, charging accessories, accessories for console players, USB flash drives, and mouse pads. More important than you think. To the gaming community and beyond, HyperX Gear is a choice of celebrity ambassadors, pro gamers, tech enthusiasts, and overclockers worldwide because it meets the most stringent product specifications and is built with best-in-class components. HyperX, I don't know, maybe the advantage for Circuit? Only one way to find out. That's going to be to ask the man himself. <laughs> Indeed, yeah. So sometimes your products, I used to play CSGO back in the day, and there'd just be somebody spinning around like this, headshotting me every single time, and it'd be like, yeah, no, I have a pro gaming chair or, or whatever, for example, a respawn. Um, uh, whether that's a true thing, whether it gives you extra gaming ability, 
can't confirm, but it at least helps you sit comfortably. And obviously, some sometimes you want to sit comfortably in another environment as well, potentially with your friends or whatever, and that's where Helix is a great opportunity. Helix Esports offers world-class gaming and virtual reality experiences at state-of-the-art esports centers throughout the United States. Helix Esports delivers a professional esports experience to everyone. Whether gamers choose to play, practice, and socialize with friends, or compete at the highest level, Helix Esports is the premier destination for gamers. Follow Helix Esports today at Helix Esports USA. And it seems every time I finish with Helix Esports, the cannon that comes in and circuit. I guess we're just gonna get this right off the bat. What headset do you have? Uh, I'm actually on a different headset. We're in the east, so uh, I'm just using whatever headset they happen to have. Fair. Well, what's your I what's mean... your normal? I, I guess we're 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 trying to we're trying to push to find <laughs> out how you've used HyperX products to get an advantage over your opponents. But <laughs> speaking of advantages over your opponents, wonderful series. I think you know, even when you weren't in the offensive end, one assist and zero goals in that last game, four saves, showing up big. What was the key to that victory over Somis? Oh, I, the key was definitely. Uh... Our team was just uh, having connecting with each other on the passes. Um, we uh, we were really trying to focus on making sure we hit each other with those passes so that we can, um, especially getting out of defense, uh, passing to clear. Yeah, you guys did an excellent job in the transitions, finding those upfield passes through the midfield, which is so critical, not going to those walls and keeping that ball centered in front of the net in the shooting lane. Uh, one of the things we saw was in game number one, you guys spent a lot of time attacking so miss down in the offensive end, but you only managed three shots on net and got beat in the transitions and in and out shot by so miss through game number one. What was kind of the breakdown that allowed so miss to walk away with the victory there? Um, we just needed to to get ourselves to just relax and play our game um, that we know how to play. We were definitely kind of stressed from being in a new environment and yeah well i i have one one last question circuit and and that is if you if you had to nominate an mvp from your team yourself included who do you think it would be <laughs> definitely thunder he uh really had those passes um uh, on point for for helping us out so definitely thunder ama well mm -hmm. fair fair but with that first game, you you said that you needed to fix something. Do you guys really have the opportunity to just talk to each other without like it coming across as toxic or whatever, or or like getting on each other's nerves or whatever? Just to say like, hey, for example, Thunder, the passes were almost connecting. Could you try a little bit more? Or or yeah, can they be a little bit better? Do you guys have that good friendship? I guess. Yeah, we're a very open team with each other. We're like actually friends. So um, it's very easy to have those conversations and um, get ourselves out of, of any issues that we have. Yeah, friendship is the way to victory at all times, obviously. Um, do you guys, like, how much do you practice for just circuits in general? Do you guys try and play together every single day? Obviously, you're friends, so you probably hang out as well. Well, how much is Rocket League on the agenda? Um, we try to get in quite often. We're obviously college students, so um, classes and exams and stuff get in the way. But we do try to get on um, and play at least like uh, uh, as much as we can. Yeah. Um, always got to have uh, more than enough practice to make sure you do you do the best. And now you're two and zero up in the league. Phenomenal start from you guys. So I'm gonna let you go and celebrate that win for tonight. And uh, unless Lars is like, hey, no, I wanna I wanna mm -hmm. ask you some more questions. But he did already say that was his last one. You know, once again, congratulations, Circuit. Uh, hopes to definitely see you back on the play once again and potentially speak to you again. For now, have a good one. Thank you. Obviously, that was a circuit from Boise State. Before we head into a, a tiny little break, obviously, as I said, somehow they always manage to come in <laughs> after Helix. Then 
You might know the riddle by now. We've got ESTV coming up. ESTV is the first ever dedicated channel for esports and gaming personalities. The first channel devoted 24-7 esports coverage can be found on the number of OTT platforms, including the Roku channel, Amazon Fire TV, Samsung TV Plus, not throw me for a loop this time, Sling TV, <laughs> and Visio Free Watch. ESTV partners with the... ESTV partners with the top world's gaming communities and production partners for the most robust esports content lineups on linear, online, and mobile. For more information, because obviously I can't say it all, please visit www.estv.co. And with that, we will be heading into a tiny little break. And after the break, we unfortunately won't be there. That doesn't mean the quality will go down. It will still be a phenomenal series, a phenomenal production being put together. But for now, we're going to head into a little break. We will see you afterwards. Take some shit out. 